Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that we can start, sir. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Cool. You guys can hear me, okay? Yeah. We hear you fine. Go ahead. Perfect. Hey guys. So, uh, how many how many guys right now are uh, in the audience? Ten. Twenty thirty-five. Wow. Excellent. Okay. And I'm seeing one. Pretty lady in the front with red, which is the most important thing. Yes. Her, her name is Maria, and about phone number you will call me later. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is great. Okay. So, guys, thanks, thanks for, for having me. Uh, this is my first time doing this over uh, WebEx, and uh, you know, usually I wear uh, fancier clothes, but. Um, Check this out. So you actually will see the first presenter with him wearing a t-shirt. And can you guys see the t-shirt? Okay, so yes, who knows what it says? Okay, so who, so who, who, who knows what it says? You guys feel it? Or not yet? Exactly. So who are you with? So I'm right now with you guys. It's pretty awesome. I, I think that uh, we're doing this over WebEx. Uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, hosting me. Okay, and, so uh, uh, it's, it's first time for us too. So uh, you're not the only one. My name is Milan Shalaya. We corresponded by email. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm here on behalf of a hosting organization, Lobby the Nice Awesome. Thanks, guys. So um, I'll go really quickly through to the slides, and now we can have time for the Q and A. Um, and some of these slides were presented at our institute, which is uh, an incubator that I'm part of, where we have chapters uh, throughout the world, but where we try to help um, companies start. And um, it actually, by now, is the largest incubator. So if you guys want to ask me questions about that as well, uh, let me know. So I'll start with the presentation. Let me see if I can actually. Cool. Okay. So uh, I'm going to just remove the chat window up because otherwise I, I can't see much. Um, so what am I passionate about? Because you know I really think that it comes down to passion. When you guys uh, start a new business, it's really really important that you do something that you're passionate about. Otherwise, just don't do it. So for me, I'm really passionate about photography. Um, I've been taking pictures for from. Uh, since I was about uh, five years old, and I like to uh, shoot people mostly. I can shoot landscapes, but I typically like to shoot uh, people, um, women especially, so I shoot models. Um, and um, I'll shoot men too sometimes, but you know, I, I, I try to uh, mostly shoot uh, models. And I love to capture moments. It's, uh, for me, something that I've always wanted to do, and um, I think the capturing moment is something that afterwards you can you know, come back to, and, it's, and it, it has volume, so as time goes by, um, goes by you have more, more volume um, of the moment. And I usually want to be basically more fly on the wall. When I shoot weddings, it's the same thing. I, I kind of hide, and I uh, shoot the moments from, from the outside. Um, but what I'm really, really into is letting uh, customers and letting people uh, share their moments. I think that if you take a picture, it's really cool. So if you don't take a picture and share it, uh, it's just stuck in the camera phone or it's stuck in the camera and it's not very useful. So I'm really, really uh, am passionate about uh, uh, letting customers and my friends and family um, know about new ways to share pictures. So, uh, let me just see if I can. So here are some examples of my um, photos uh, that was shot a few years ago of a model that wanted to just do some casual, some casual photos. Um, I do some uh, fashion, and uh, that was done for for magazine work. Can you guys see me okay? Yes, yes, perfect. Cool, cool. Um, and then, um, as I mentioned, I love to shoot moments. Um, I thought that was a really nice moment of uh, three generations uh, showing the gap of, of the ages. 
Um, that was shut during the wedding. Of how the law uh, in Avoid is, uh, is helping the, the um, uh, older men. Um, that is my son during uh, one of the weddings. Uh, Ogi can, can recognize the cake that's in his picture. Um, and more, more uh, you know, moments that, that I enjoy from, from you know, sizes to age differences. Um, and some more uh, moments. Uh, that was the wedding that was shot in Italy. Uh, you know, here in the US, you actually can't shoot rice when people get married because uh, it kills the birds. They, they eat the rice and then they blow up. So, but if you weddings in Italy, or possibly in Serbia, um, you can capture moments like this where you can see the, the rice. And of course, I have to show this. I also shoot nudes, so you guys will have to, you know, this is going to be my only non PG rated slide for the entire show. So, moving on to business. Uh, what is iFi? We, uh, so iFi is, is a very, very small card that fits into your camera. Um, it's a memory card that also has Wi-Fi in it, and uh, it makes your camera wireless. And um, the whole idea is that you can take pictures, have fun with the camera, don't worry about anything else, just uh, take pictures and uh, movies as you normally would, and everything happens for you magically. You know, uh, in the old days, we used to take pictures and take the uh, film roll to get developed, and then half an hour later, we had prints. Um, then cameras became more fun. They became almost free to shoot with, actually all free to shoot with after, after a few years. But the problem is it, it became really difficult to share pictures. Um, so what this card does is it solves that uh, difficulty. Um, it is actually not just a, a very small card. It actually is a very, very large ecosystem because People think, oh, it's a really, really cool card, right? I mean, it looks like, like a gadget uh, where you can stick to your camera and that's all it does. But in fact, it is a complete ecosystem where we connect um, routers to cameras to uh, carriers. You'll see uh, KDDI in the chain and that's the number two carrier in Japan. Uh, and I'll mention them uh, soon for the talk. We connect uh, to sharing sites, we connect to printers. Um, Best Buy is the number one retailer for cameras, actually worldwide. They are the biggest retailer in the US for, for cameras um, and for electronics, but they're actually the number one camera store in the world based on how many cameras they're selling, even though they only sell in the US and Canada. It's just the numbers are staggering of how many cameras they sell. So we sell at Best Buy, and by being there, uh, it really helps us you know, move, move the volume. Um, again, it is not just a card, it actually is an entire system. Um, we start from the moment of capture, where we are inside cameras and camcorders and camera phones via apps. We have three apps for iOS and for Android. You can't use the apps unless you um, uh, actually have a card, because you can't use the app unless you have an account, and you can't get an account unless you have a card. But we are always in the moment of capture. We connect through routers, open hotspots, or cell towers if you have your cell phone with you. And um, by the way, so far is the audio okay? Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, yes. Great, great, okay. Um, and we also connect to cloud services, so uh, we actually even have our own cloud as well as cloud services that already exist. Um, and we um, let you share all your content and view all your content on many devices, from smartphones to tablets to computers to sharing sites. The whole idea is from from capture to viewing, you can also always see your pictures and videos. Um, so a little bit more about iFi and how we started. Uh, we were uh, four founders. Today we have 45 employees. Um, 
with those of four, uh, 45 full-time employees, we actually have uh, about, I would say, 80 total if you count for um, our outsourced support, which is all over Europe, Japan, and the US. Um, manufacturing is done in Thailand and in China. We have operations and we have distribution. We work with the top three uh, distributors in the US and they sell into, into retail. And we have uh, distributors in Japan, Europe, and as of uh, last week, uh, Australia. We raised four rounds of funding. Um, the first round was uh, one million from Angels uh, the first year, going into five and a half million of the A. That, that got rolled into a 6.5 million uh, Series A. After um, uh, 18 months, we raised the B, C, and D, and I'll get more into that um, uh, shortly. Um, we, we didn't have to raise the last round because we actually have sales now of uh, five years, but um, we did something with a carrier in Japan that uh, was, was a very, very um, big change for us in terms of our strategies, so we actually took their uh, 20 million, and that was the last round that we did. And again, I'll mention that uh, in a little bit. We sell through all major retail in the U.S., uh, both Amazon, for example, online, and Best Buy, Walmart, Target um, uh, in the U.S. Um, there's a, a, a co-branded Sandisk iFi card. So in Europe, we sell with uh, Sandisk. So Sandisk is actually our biggest competitor, as well as our best partner in Europe, because the card is made by us. It's Sandisk iFi co-branded. It's red, so it's orange. Um, and we basically pulled out of Europe to give them full ownership of Europe because they have a massive sales force that they can sell in um, uh, throughout Europe. And then in Japan, Canada, and Australia is still the iPhone brand. We have several revenue streams. Unlike uh, some companies that have a single source of revenue, we actually make money from you buying a card as well as when you print, for example, through Kodak, Shutterfly, Snapfish, any, any sharing site that, uh, that will monetize the users, we get uh, revenue from um, signups for new accounts, for referrals, for prints. So we make money first on you when you bought the card, and then as you keep using the card, we keep making money off of you as you use it. We also make money from carriers in terms of being their cloud. Um, Last year we did 300 million photos, roughly, and uh, videos going through our servers. Because as these cards upload, they upload through our servers. If, if you wanted to go to, say, from, from your uh, camera phone or your camera to Facebook, it's going through our cloud. So as that's happening, um, we go through our servers. So we can figure out how many pictures people have actually taken. And it's about 300 million that have been shared. There, there are way more pictures that we use with iFi cards because some people don't want to share, but the ones that uh, do want to share are going through our servers. Um, we also have our software inside the top 10 cameras from the top 10 OEMs. So Sony, Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, Olympus have all put our software into their camera. And uh, the idea with that is to give the user a better experience in the camera. Um, so you actually don't have to use a camera that has iFi inside, but if you do, you actually do get a better experience with the UI in the camera. Um, we keep doing two and a half X year over year at sales. We started selling at the end of 07, and since the end of 07, every year we grow at a rate of two and a half X year over year on sales. Um, what is uh, your vision and, and what is my vision? So my, my vision really is iFi's vision. Um, I would not imagine us in any other way uh, because if you don't have the same vision as, as a company and, and if you're the founder, you have trouble. Uh, a lot of times you start with one vision and then you change and then as you change that becomes uh, difficult to, to uh, stay. We've, we've maintained the same vision of letting customers and users share easily. Um, and that's really at the core of our company. Um, photos typically have a lifespan. They're very, very important to you when you first capture them. 
and then they're also important to you uh, for the first seven days as you view them. Then they sort of become the you know, curve. I'll, I'll try and do it like this, basically. Um, you, they're important to you at the beginning, and then after a few weeks, they stop being important to you. You stop looking at photos. You don't care for them anymore or for the videos. And then a few months to a few years later, depending on the photo, they become much more relevant to you again because now they're, they're nostalgic. So you look at your photos of your kids, of your friends, family, loved ones, and they become important to you again after a few years. Now, the problem is, if you don't um, uh, get the photos out of the camera quickly, uh, you know, as close to capture as possible, the sharing sites, the printing sites, can't monetize it because the photo that's stale, let's say two weeks to four weeks old, because it's already old news, people tend to not share it anymore or do anything with it. So uh, we help you get your photo out of the camera easily, as close to capture as possible. We started uh, in the middle of 2005. We wanted to um, figure out how to make the photo uh, uh, industry be able to share photos more easily. Um, as I mentioned earlier, cameras are fun to use. They're totally easy to take a picture. You know, taking is very, very easy, but beyond that, it's not easy at all. Uh, and it takes effort, and it takes energy, and people basically throw it up. And they think of it as a chore. So when it's a chore, you, to, you tend to put the picture off. See, you see with dishes, laundry, folding laundry, you end up not doing it for some bit of time because it's a chore and you prefer to, to just put it off. So same thing with camera, images, and videos. You take pictures, that's super easy. Getting them out of the camera is not so easy, so you put it off. The mobile phones have changed that and now people are more in tune with um, sharing the moment on Instagram and Facebook, and that's really where things are today. So phones are connected but have poor quality. Cameras are disconnected and have great quality. So what we do is we connect the cameras. Um, so the business evolved. We started with actually a very, very different idea than what it is today, and we realized that after we went to do some friendly meetings with VCs, that um, the first idea that we had was not going to uh, uh, actually get executed because the VCs gave us really good feedback that as four engineers, um, they would not have the confidence in us to deliver an idea that we first had when we started the company. Um, and it, by the way, we're still four founders, even though we're 45 employees uh, plus, but two of us are doing business and two of us are doing engineering. So, but the background of all four of us is engineering, and that's what the VCs knew. They, they completely understood that the two of us were into business, but they knew that by the foundation of our background uh, and education and the last you know, 20 years of experience, it was all basically engineering. So it's said, guys, we love you, love the team, but we believe that you should be doing something else because you don't have experience at retail. Based on that, we switched to our idea number two, and that was basically, within about two months of pitching VCs, we realized that we have to change, so we pitched to idea number two, which was the iFi card. Uh, the iFi card was going to be our next product after about a year or two of real company, so we actually ended up doing um, the first idea, the second idea, at the very first product launch. Um, and, then, and then we only started the idea by thinking they were only going to sell cards. But we didn't know a lot. We didn't know they will grow into a sort of play. We didn't know they were, they were going to get a rev share from companies like Shutterfly, Snapfish. Today, Shutterfly owns Kodak. You know, by the way, on that, um, Kodak offered Shutterfly to acquire them before the IPO. Shutterfly held up, the IPO has been great. Today, because of all what happened to Kodak, Shutterfly bought them for uh, 20 plus million dollars. Um, so compare Kodak's brand 
these wires for three million dollars was Instagram, just two and a half guys for two, for uh, sorry, uh, twelve guys for two and a half years, and one million dollars in the revenue. But if you want afterwards, I can mention to you why I said they're not acquired. Um, so we had no idea they would get revenue from printing sites. We had no idea they would get into geolocation and how relevant geolocation really is. Uh, but it really is important for taking photos. Um, we had no idea they would get into open hotspots. Uh, we just thought they would work at your home. We didn't know they would get into archiving and backups. We didn't know they were going to charge the big guys, Canon, Sony, Nikon, and Panasonic, for putting our stuff into the camera. And we didn't know that our smartphones, uh, and you forget, this was basically you know, six. We had no idea how big smartphones will become, and we have no idea that, we'll, that we actually will become the cloud of the top two carriers in Japan. So, the main point, again, of, of this is that you start with something, and then you don't have to really know what's going to happen in the next seven years. You have to have a vision. The vision has to stay very, very succinct and very uh, clear to to you, your co-founders, your employees, and your customers. Then as you grow the business, you learn and you adjust. And we had no idea about, about all of these things when we started, but, uh, and we are still learning, even after seven years. Here's a quick timeline. Um, started in, in 05, we um, raised our first $50,000, actually 60K, uh, one, one of six from a very well-known Bay Area guy, which really helped us raise the next, um, the next angels. About every month, we raised from one more angel, and uh, all, all the way to about a million dollars for the first year. Uh, Baron, my co-founder, had the alpha card after only four months of doing engineering, and he actually had the card upload photos of the TKP four months after starting. And pretty much Baron and, and Eugene, um, who are Turkish and Russian, they are the reason that I stopped doing engineering. There's no point for me to do engineering if my co-founders are such gods at doing engineering. So they really are uh, truly gifted, uh, and I'm not. So they can do the engineering while I can do sales, marketing, and development. In September of 06, we had our, uh, our beta, we actually uh, charged $100 for, for our cards, even though they were totally broken, but we didn't know they were broken, so we tried to be uh, charged for beta. We had 10,000 um, people wanting to be in beta, and we chose 100 out of those, uh, because we uh, actually we took 1,000, and then we um, went down to 100 at, at beta 2. We uh, knew that we can't handle the size of the beta, so we actually just had 100 to 1,000 in, in months. We raised, based on having revenue, we raised our first uh, round uh, Q107 because now we had revenue from uh, beta and we had the angel round from the first year. We learned a lot, knew that we actually did not have our act together during the beta, so what we did is we spent a whole year, so from Q406 to Q407, we fixed the entire thing, we did our software, we did our server, our applications, um, uh, worked a little bit more on hardware, and we actually launched at retail, full launch, Amazon, Walmart, Costco, by all the New York guys, um, Q4 of 07. Um, Q2 of 08, we launched uh, Brick and Mortar, uh, because we wanted to first start small, start online only, learn, and then grow to uh, major retail. So basically Q2 of 08, we got into the smaller brick and mortar, like Ritz Camera, Wolf Camera, Fry's. And then from there, we kept going into the larger retailers, well, Walmart, Target, Best Buy, Staples, Apple Depot, Apple. Um, we closed our B. Uh, about 18 months later, we did the X2 card, which was a major reskin of hardware. We added more cameras to our um, arsenal of uh, 10 camera companies that support us. Closed the C 18 months later, 
then this is, an, is basically uh, a year-old uh, partnership now where they're selling uh, all over Europe. We added iFi Direct because we, we kept seeing what's happening with mobile phones. Um, the idea with the iFi Direct is that you can take pictures of the camera. It can be anywhere in the world. You don't have to be at home or at any open hotspot. It can be in the middle of the mountains. As you shoot, the car goes to your phone, and then from, from the phone over 3G and 4G, go to your PC back home, and FASA, Facebook, the like, person only use to take pictures, and get the same immediacy as you get with a smartphone. Um, we, we also did I I view the premium, which is our cloud. We also uh, closed our D, which was the most recent thing that happened at the beginning of this year, which was uh, $20 million from Docomo, which is the number one carrier in Japan. So, and then what's next? Uh, I can't talk about it because we don't pre-announce any of our stuff, so just stay tuned. Um, so how do you brainstorm ideas? I think that it's really, really important that you have really, really strong uh, co-founders. Uh, for us, they're extremely, extremely amazing, and you know, typically engineers are good at one thing. They're good at software, hardware, servers, ASIC. My two co-founders are actually good at everything, which is really, really unique. Um, so having them being completely strong at everything that's related to engineering um, makes for very passionate arguments and very passion and tons of passion around the table uh, when we talk about ideas and the future and, and the business. But we never lose the respect for each other. We're friends. Uh, we invited this friend from eighth grade. We are, we are the uh, you know, first two um, um, uh, Israeli kids in, in um, uh, junior high that became friends. And we stayed friends ever since. Baron and Eugene have been inseparable since college. They were in class together, then they were, two, they were TAs together. They never worked um, at a separate company ever. They were always together since college. And um, so we had this very, very strong bond between, between us four. We put our ideas down on slides, we all, all we email each other, um, we argue a lot, we are basically all foreign. So as you know, foreigners talk a lot and, and, and debate. And but we, but it's very, very important to test. And we test our, 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 our ideas all the time. With consumers, we have uh, double-blind tests where we go behind the mirror and we watch what's happening with consumers as we ask them questions. We go online. Uh, in fact, these are some of the uh, websites that you guys should, should check out. The great resources for testing, and um, we test online. We also test in in real life through uh, customers. The nice thing by by doing things like, for example, uh, user testing, is you can have a new app and you can compile your new build. And as soon as you have a new app, you can pay around a hundred bucks, and within half an hour, you actually get a panel of people we like we can test against. And the nice thing is you can test in real time a brand new feature with real people. And as you're testing that, um, the cool thing is that you're getting immediate feedback. So you, you, you've built your app, you've made a change, you want to test it. Within half an hour to an hour, you actually have feedback on what's happening with your app from real people. So uh, user testing is a great company. We email our customers through uh, ServerMonkey. We ask them surveys all the time. We email blast them through MailChimp, so those two companies are uh, good to work with. And uh, I'm I, about the last slide, or, or I have one more thing for this, and then I'm done, and then I'll open it up for Q&A. Um, when you think about your idea, it's really, really good to ask yourself. Most people love it. It's really, really good because, because many people, people have ideas, ideas that are, are they think are, 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 are but the main uh, question that you have is real And will it change or disrupt the current landscape? Um, now, when you are too disruptive, it's very, very tricky. You have to be careful because if you are too disruptive, uh, it makes your marketing even tougher. Uh, marketing in general is very, very tough, but 
and that and actually marketing will be the biggest problem that you'll ever have with the company. It's gonna be way harder than raising money, way harder than hiring, firing, business development. Marketing will be your number one problem. So if you do a brand new idea, uh, it becomes even harder because now you can't ride on the coattails of other big companies. Now, also, many ideas that I see as a mentor at the Farm Institute is basically ideas that are uh, not, not uh, mind-blowing ideas and they're only solutions that are looking for problems. So if they define a, a problem, it's not really a problem, and then they solve it. That, that's not really a, a good value business idea. So you really want to make sure that you're solving a real problem. So what problem are you solving? How are you solving it? How are you going to make money? And what is your secret sauce? Very, very simple. Um, and I jumped around to the slide earlier. It's really, really important that you actually are passionate about your idea. You can't just go for an area that you're interested in. Let's say that you're into uh, CRMs and you want to create the next um, uh, sales force. Uh, it, unless you're really, really, really into CRMs and uh, you have a deep passion in, with CRMs, don't do it because um, it's a massive problem and you're going to have a very, very tough time uh, competing with the guys that already exist and um, the passion will be the thing that holds you for the next seven years. So whatever you do, make sure that you're doing it for seven years because you will not get exit in one year. There are very, very few Instagram uh, stories where they, let's say, in 12 guys got a billion dollars in two and a half years. Most companies and you can think of Shutterfly, uh, Facebook. Um, most companies actually do succeed, um, take about seven years to get to exit. So think of your idea as, can I actually do this in seven years? And will I still love it seven years from now, even while the going gets tough? Um, ask your friends about, your, about their opinion on, on your idea. Um, don't worry about copying. We, we hear ideas all the time where people are scared of, of telling us what, what the ideas are because they think that they're only looking for copy them. Uh, don't worry about ever being copied. You're going to um, uh, do something on your own. If someone is copying you, it actually makes sense that uh, your idea actually may be viable. So you, you should uh, probably be um, uh, flattered that you were copied. We finally had our first copycat card in China after being in, in market for five years. It's too bad that actually it's a bad clone. Finally in China, there are these you know, orange looking iPad cards with big copies. The problem is they copied the uh, packaging and they copied the entire uh, marketing that we have on uh, packaging. The actual card is totally broken. Same thing as you know, if you go to China and you uh, go to an Apple store, they have complete fake Apple stores and you're buying fake Apple products, uh, that actually don't work. So, similar to iPhone, there are fake uh, iPhone cards now, but that actually don't work. Um, so, should you pursue a few ideas or should you just focus on one? And I'll always say only focus on one. You cannot have two ideas. So, let's take, uh, for example, iPhone. We knew that we wanted to make a card. We knew that we also, as we learned about services, that we want to also do a service play, a cloud play, um, but we always focused on the card. The other ideas were there and we, kept, and, and we kept working on them as well, but the core of the company was about the card. There was no way for us to focus on the card and the cloud and sharing sites all the same time. We always put the main focus on the card and, and then everything else was sort of on the side um, and uh, as nice to have. So I think you're very, very small. It's a beautiful weapon. So make sure that you stay laser focused. It's really, really important that you stay, that you stay uh, focused because that's your biggest weapon against the other company. There are many companies out there that will try to compete with you with your ideas. Great, but if you're small, you can be very, very agile and you can fit it. And um, now, I really think that's really it. Last slide. Yep. So, some parting words. Um, many companies 
start uh, their ideas with a big discussion to, to uh, make tons of money. So I think, okay, I'm going to make a company and I'm going to uh, work hard at it and eventually I'll make a killing and I'll be rich. Uh, please don't do that. Build a business, keep building the business, do not worry about the exit, don't worry about ever having a strategy for the exit. People will ask you where it is, VCs, angels, employees, co-founders, will always be asked, okay, so when are you going to exit? What is the strategy for exiting? If you just build the business, things will happen that are good to you. If you focus about the exit, what will happen is that you'll be focused on the exit, you won't focus on creating revenue and building a business, and you may or may not exit, but if you set your goal at the exit, um, let's say that you want to be acquired, you will never IPO. You will never do anything beyond getting just acquired for a little bit of money. If you set your goal at an IPO, or you set your goal at even beyond the IPO, just growing the business, you may IPO, you may get acquired, who knows? It'll, it'll hopefully work out, but you won't have to worry about it because all you're worried about day to day is building the business. Um, being a founder kind of means that really you, you have a sickness and a disease. Um, I'm sorry to be negative, but I'm not. It's actually, a, it's actually a really, really good disease. It's very, very um, um, positive to have this disease. But it really is because as you go through, this is my seventh company. Uh, first one as a founder, but I've been to seven startups, and I am basically addicted. Startups, so it really is a disease because I could not, you know, see myself working at, at a big company anymore because I uh, can't imagine uh, having the politics and and all the red tape around it. So being being a founder or entrepreneur is a sickness. Realize that, adapt that, um, and then you can move on because it really is um, going to be the toughest thing that you'll ever do. Um, even if you exit. It will still be the toughest thing that you'll have to do until you exit and even beyond that. So, so plan for seven years because that, that's usually uh, how long it takes. Um, and if you have an idea, uh, it, just think, will I, I be able to do this idea for seven years? If not, don't do it. If you can, um, then definitely have fun. Uh, it's going to get tough and you'll have many, many bumps in the road. So that's why if you have a true passion for the idea, the passion will sustain you and hold you even through the tough times. And that's it. I'm done. Thank you. This is, uh, you can find more links uh, about me on how to get in touch. And I'd love to hear some Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Zoom, for this uh, uh, excellent uh, presentation about very cool business model and, and your i5. So let's Thank see you. if we have uh, questions from audience. Anyone? Hold on. Uh, so I have a quick question in, in regards to the technology you're using. So you said you have basically the Wi-Fi card and you have the, the ecosystem around it. Aren't you concerned that at some point the camera producers like Canon or Fuji just put a Wi-Fi card directly into their, their camera and basically bypass your product completely? No. Okay, great question. Um, I get it all the time. So um, here's, here's the background. We started the company uh, seven years ago, and even before we started the company, there was the Kodak Easy Share. And we went to BC and we told them that we were going to make a Wi-Fi um, card. Um, they said, oh, no way, you'll never succeed because cameras will always put Wi-Fi, sorry, camera guys will always put Wi-Fi in the cameras. And we said, no, never going to happen. You're going to have one or two cameras from, from camera guys, and that's about it. And we were right. So look at what happened in the last seven years. We are in 85% of all cameras that are being sold today by the top 10 camera OEMs. So we have hundreds of models from Canon, Sony, Nikon, and yes, they will keep making Wi-Fi in their cameras 
as one off because they will always try to do it on their own. So Panasonic, Canon, Sony have always tried to do Wi-Fi and they always will keep trying to do Wi-Fi. But the Japanese guy, guys know how to make um, cameras. They don't know how to make Wi-Fi services and software that's, that's really pleasing to the consumer. We, as a company, have no idea how to make cameras, but we know how to make services, sharing experiences, and wireless that has to do with um, uh, smartphones and cameras. So I am definitely um, not worried at all that uh, will, will become irrelevant there because, as I mentioned, in the last seven years, I would count maybe uh, 10 models total from five camera companies that have done Wi-Fi built in. But if you read the reviews, they're really, really poor. And then if you go and read the reviews of the iPad card, you'll see that we won all the awards for ease of use uh, because we actually do understand how to make sharing experiences really, really good. And then if you think about the next step, so because I'm not worried about cameras having Wi-Fi because actually, actually it's opposite. I believe that having Wi-Fi and cameras helps the category. Um, if more cameras had Wi-Fi and you could share easily from the camera, through your phone, uh, wherever you are. That's the experience that I'm trying to drive, and iFi has a whole ecosystem around that. So if you're using, um, let's say, a camera from Panasonic and it has Wi-Fi built in, you can still use the iFi ecosystem to go through that and share to Picasa, Facebook Flickr, and they put us into the camera. If they didn't, then all they're doing is letting you upload to your PC or to one sharing site. They will never give you the experience that we have. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you very much. Cool. Okay, thank you. One more here. Dean, what was the idea number one? Okay, so, uh, so it's fine. I'll mention it because actually it's patented, so it's fine. I'll mention it. Um, so, here's, so here's the idea. We, we, um, we wanted to let customers share photos. And we saw how they're going into retail and they're taking their film and they're dumping the film into an envelope and the envelope uh, gets processed and after half an hour you get prints. So we want to make a USB stick and the USB stick will uh, masquerade itself as a host device. If you take today a camera and you stick a USB stick into it, uh, nothing happens because the USB stick needs to have the computer as the host and the USB stick is the, is the slave. Well, the camera is also a slave and so it needs to have a host device to connect to the USB. So we were going to make a stick that behaves as a PC. You stick it to your camera, it sucks all the images out of the camera, but you can't access the images in full res because it's a locked stick that we are looking for you, and then you would go uh, and dump the stick at retail, get prints for a CD or a DVD or you know, whatever retail does for you, and then they would unlock the stick for you because the stick is free, so you can uh, use it for anything else but storing pictures from your camera, and you would then get the pictures, you get the stick back, it's a free stick, we get money from retail, you get you get prints, and everyone is happy. And so we, we thought it was a really cool idea. The main uh, feedback from the VCs was that we were going to uh, count on, on two or three major retail deals, like Costco or Walmart. So, if, so they didn't have any doubt that we could pull off the idea. It was a USB stick, and, we, and they knew that we could pull off the you know, uh, USB host uh, protocol. What they were doubting is that four guys could pull off a retail play and make deals with Walmart, Target, Walgreens, CVS, and because if we didn't pull it off, we would have no business. So they said, we love you, but because you're very, very risky and you are um, uh, completely dependent on retail agreeing to your business, no thanks, come back to us with a different idea. So today, we do have all of retail 
style of day because we sell through Walmart, Target, Best Buy, Apple, but we are only selling through them. We don't have to have them as a, uh, a requirement for a business because we can sell also through Amazon or on our own. So that was really, actually really, really good advice. Okay, thank you, Zip. Let's see if there's anybody else. No? No. Okay. So, Zip, thank you very much uh, once more for joining us via this video link. I hope that uh, some of the next times we are going to see you in person. This should cool. also be great. And uh, with that, I bid you farewell and see you sometime soon. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks.